All right, hi everyone. My name is Hannah Marie Garcia, and I'm a current graduate student researcher at the University of Delaware, working in the School of Marine Science and Policy, where I'm getting my master's in marine policy. And I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina, but my work here in Delaware deals with working on how we can improve stakeholder engagement with Native American tribes and offshore wind power, essentially looking into potential ways to ensure a more sustainable and equitable transition to renewable energy in the ocean space. My name is Sam and just like Hannah Marie, I am a second year master's student in marine policy at the University of Delaware and my research is also in the offshore wind space except it's a little different. I explore general attitudes towards offshore wind. It's important to listen to what local people want as we build current projects and rely on not only wind power but renewable energy as part of our future energy generation. And that is why we are so excited to be here today with you and advise you and see what you can create to help educate people about renewable energy and about climate change. First, wind power is important because of two words, climate change. Climate change is no longer just a hypothesis or an abstract idea, it is a household name and its effects are already being felt around the world. Terrible droughts, wildfires, super hurricanes, and unprecedented snowstorms are happening now. Think about Texas just a couple of weeks ago. But wind power is also becoming a household name because it will be the primary supplier of renewable energy in the future. President Biden's administration wants to help Help the offshore wind industry, for example, install 30,000 megawatts of power by 2030, which is enough to power 10 million homes. Onshore wind energy will be built up even more with combined projections of up to 404,000 megawatts by 2050. Not only that, but offshore wind power offers a great opportunity for to revitalize coastal communities. And that's why I also believe that the environmental justice and equitable transitions are so vital to adapting and mitigating climate change. So we need an all hands on deck approach to combating the worst effects that requires building fruitful partnerships, reconciling with past histories and uplifting others as we move forward towards more sustainable and holistic approaches to managing our environment. And with research like ours and climate jams like this one, we believe that we can unlock the perfect mix of social and technological integration. More people will accept or support renewable energy projects that we so urgently need to fight climate change and bring greenhouse mitigation to reality. On the topic of the climate jam, what is the main point that you want participants to walk away with? Hmm. So that's a tough one. See, everything we've been talking about is so diverse and encompasses a lot of different topics. But I think the simple fact is that renewable energy has an amazing opportunity to learn from the past mistakes from other industries such as oil and gas. And we have an awesome transition point happening where we can begin to shift away from short term profit increasing mindsets and towards more long term holistic sustainable considerations. And so that's the benefit of climate jams in this kind of context, because we get to talk to people about these systems, help them understand and get excited and hopefully garner more support. I'd also add that we are at a transition point and that transition point is giving us the power as the people watching this video as the younger generation. It's not just somebody else's responsibility anymore. And this shouldn't be a responsibility that we take on as a burden. It's a responsibility that we have the tools and the resources to change and to leave the world a better place. Going along with that, Hannah Marie, what is your vision for clean energy in the next 10 years? I think my vision for clean energy in the future, as many other people in this climate jam might also share, is that we have a greater source of diversified renewable energy. Everything from offshore wind to solar panel to hydrokinetic. So essentially that we have finally learned how to incorporate diverse energy systems, making sure that we're not relying on single sources of energy. And then we've also, in that process, learned how to fully incorporate community perspectives into the planning, job training, and collaboration. That way communities are involved for in every step of the way. And furthermore, I think by transitioning to more renewable and clean energy in the next 10 years, we're also inspiring new sources of energy technology. So we're getting more and more diverse as we go on and the infrastructure system becomes cleaner and more efficient for future generations. How do we think games can help support our visions? So the entire process of building offshore wind and renewable energy is not something that is easily understood by many 
and garnering public support is a huge piece to the puzzle. So having accessible information is a really substantial part of the message to get out to a large number of people. I mean, as the European market has proven, the renewable energy and offshore wind space is possible. So we will need job and workforce training and community support to make sure that these systems come online, which also means exposing people and communities about this world of opportunity that renewable energy offers. So games can help inspire and educate people about the benefits, costs, and opportunities, and hopefully also help shift the industry more towards efficiency and reliability as a whole, as more people work to understand and interact with these systems. So as we conclude, we hope that this video was not only informative and gave you a look into what Hannah Marie and I do in the offshore wind space, but we also hope that it sparks some curiosity about what you can do, not only in this climate jam, but outside of it as well. Yes, and we both are gonna have office hours throughout the climate jam. So we look forward to answering any and all of your questions. And we're both looking forward to seeing what we can all come up with together.